Hey guys, welcome back to the Suncor VG91 restoration attempt series. First off, thank you for all the comments and tips and suggestions, and thoughts and prayers and good luck wishes and so on. Uh, so, a few things. One, uh, I got a few comments about the series of Ninji Concaps that had been in here are notorious for being bad. A number of others have reported seeing them leak. And what leaks out is corrosive and conductive and ruined circuit boards. So if you have one of these and you haven't replaced your caps, you really should. At least take a look at them. Also, this does have this is a double-sided board, plated through holes. And there was some concern that hey, maybe with that damage and the charring, the plating between the sides had failed. Well, there's only really one connection that goes from one side to the other, and that's fine. So I think we're good there. Also, comment about these connectors not being so hot. Yeah, I've already broken off a couple of the little locking pieces of plastic on the other side. I do not like taking this board in and out. I've already done it about four or five times. Every time I do, they seem to get damaged a little bit more. So there was a thought that, hey, maybe some of these connectors aren't so hot. That's still a possibility. I've been careful to get them all back seated and that the wires haven't gotten yanked out. Okay, well, I do, I did get a copy of a schematic. So someone else who has a copy of the owner's manual said, hey, in there they say that you really can't fix this yourself. If you've got a problem, send it back to Sencor for servicing. However, if you really do want to give it a try, at least... They do provide a schematic and a parts list and parts placement diagram. So someone else has it. And they did provide me with a PDF scan of the power supply schematic. So here it is. And it confirms what I had deduced from just looking at the circuit. That it's linear. And nothing fancy. No switching regulars or anything. We have five bridge rectifiers feeding five linear regulators. The curious thing though is that some of the voltage is 5 volts plus minus 15. Those are off the shelf fixed regulators readily available. 7815, 7805, 7915. They used adjustables for all five. LM317s and 337s. But there are no trim pots. They're all fixed resistors. So why would you use adjustable regulators if you can't tweak it a little bit <laughs> to get dead on with the voltages, why not just use the fixed variety? I don't know, maybe they got a bulk discount. It also confirms that 30 volts is the correct output voltage on this guy. I was measuring 44 and 30 out, it's supposed to be 30 out. Shame on Syncor for using a 35 volt cap and a 30 volt rail. 50 I think would have been nice to give a little bit of headroom, so maybe that's why it was the first one to fail. But, now that we know what the voltages should be, they all come out on this connector, and they're labeled, so let's fire this up and check it. Also found out that, all of this time I thought that this thing didn't have a backlight. Oh, it does. It's just incredibly dim. There's a trimmer on the back of this, and mine was turned on. I turned it up all the way, and now it just kind of faintly has a backlight. Now, it could be that backlight's powered off to 15-volt rail, and mine's dim because the voltage is too low. But it's also very possible that it has an electroluminescent backlight, and those go dim over time, so it might just be as good as it gets. Alright, let's check some voltages. So they all come out on this ribbon cable up front. Left to right, we have ground. Alright, zero volts. We have ground. Alright, zero volts. Then we should have that 30 volt rail. Yep, 30.2. Then it should be minus 15. Okay, we have minus 15.18. This should be plus 15. Nope, we have three. Okay, we have a problem there. Let's keep going. Should be minus five. We have minus five. Should be plus five. We have plus 5, it should be, it says 8 volts unregulated, and that's 10, but it could be because this thing isn't fully powered up, that relay hasn't kicked in. Yeah, let's power it down. So, 
we have a problem on the plus 15. So plus 15. Oh, that's that's going to the panel mount LM317. All right, a little bit harder to get out. So let's fire that back up and let's check that the input voltage to it is good. So we, may, you know, we could have bad diodes. We could have you know, the problem could be further back, not necessarily just that regulator. But I do have another one. <laughs> I did happen to have two LM317s. New, never used. All right, we got 23 in it looks like, and that's probably the, or that's the output of three. And maybe this is the, that's probably the adjustment pin. 1.8. That doesn't really mean anything. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. Okay, let's, let's power it down. So it could be two problems. One is the ratio of two resistors sets what the output voltage should be. I don't remember if it's a current thing or the voltage. I don't remember what the relationship is with V adjust versus V out. The adjustment, the voltage at the adjustment will be less than the output voltage because there's a voltage divider here. So either one of the resist resistors could be bad and the adjustment voltage is off which will decrease the output voltage or the input voltage could be too low but it was 22 so that should be fine or the device itself is damaged actually i'm not looking at the wrong one yeah i am looking at the wrong one yes yeah, so it's yes yeah, the one that's going off off board yeah i'll tell what the voltage there is so they don't label the output, they don't label the input voltage or the adjustment voltage, just what the output voltage should be. So let me check that adjustment voltage again. I'll pull up the data sheet for it and do a little calculation. Alright, so actually we have 23.84 going in. And we have 23.84. Yeah, 3.1 going out, and the adjustment is 1.8. All right. So with those numbers, I can uh, verify if the device is working right, or the resistors are bad, or what. Okay, the voltage on the adjustment pin, given the values that they indicate, should be uh, about 1.2 volts less than the output. So, 13.8, obviously it is not. Well, the two resistor values should be 242 ohms and 2.67K. I've identified them on the board, so this should be the 242 within 1%. Yeah, 242.9, now this is supposed to be the 2.6. And that is not 2.6. That is 0.47. Okay, let's try it the other way. Now it's in circuit, so we, you know we can throw things off. We'll lift one leg to make sure. We're measuring it in the opposite direction. And it looks like we are getting about 2.6 or close to it in the opposite direction. Why does it happen? Because there's caps and semiconductors and stuff in circuit two. So yeah, it looks like it probably is okay. Which leaves the OM317, which is mounted to the cabinet, or the connector going to it, or the wiring, or the traces. So we'll want to go over everything, check for any defects on the board. I'm sure I didn't screw anything up when I replaced the caps. Double check the polarity. Now it does look a little grungy in this area too. I noticed that when I was first working, when I first took this out. Like there, I, mean, I don't know what, like there's discoloration in that area. I'm talking about down in there. Yeah. 
So uh, I guess I should check, check all the diodes too. But the voltage going in is okay. At least the DC voltage is okay. So why might that, so assuming it's the LM317 is bad, why might that one gone bad? Well, one of these caps might have been shorted out too when it was putting excessive load. Now these chips are supposed to have built-in crowbar projection. In other words, if there's too much current being drawn, they're supposed to shut themselves down, but nothing's perfect. And, uh, you know, that, that, could, that could be it. Now this one, is LM317, is mounted to the cabinet and it has a, a connector on it. So it's not going to be the most trivial thing to just quickly swap out. Let's see what I mean. As soon as I get it out, they have heat shrink tubing going over each of the leads, going to extension leads, going to a plug. And it's insulated from the cabinet, so I'll save all the little insulating bits. So, there it is. Okay, I swapped out the LM317 and reflowed the solder on the associated components. I did lift one leg of that 2.67k uh, resistor and it's fine. That occurred to me one thing I could have tried doing was remove the output cable from that board. In other words, test it unloaded. But at any rate, let's give it a try. I'm getting a little bit pessimistic at this point, but let's see. Crap. Oh wait, was that a click? Was that a very faint click? Much louder click that time. That is very, 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 very good. <laughs> There's been some comments about the relay quality on these too. So let's just check the voltages here. So minus 15, 30, plus 15, 14.99. Good enough for me. Right, let's fire up the scope. Oh, look at that. Thing of beauty. Fantastic. That sure looks like a video signal to me. Get rid of the cursors there. Change the output pattern. Oh, yeah. I think we are back in business. That would be a staircase pattern. Woohoo! Ah, here we go. Here's a Crosley 307 I've been working on, and isn't that a thing of beauty? Sound modulation. Working, and all the various patterns come to know and love. So much working very nicely. And now I have a very dim backlight, <laughs> after not having one at all for so long. So, there you go. If you have a Suncor VG91, I strongly suggest you pop it open and pull out that power supply board and at the very least replace those five 220 microfarad Nichicon caps. It's the easiest board to get out, fairly easy to work on, and well, well worth the effort. Thank you for all the assistance I got. I am back in business for tonight. <laughs> we'll see what tomorrow brings. Thanks for watching.